Welcome everyone to today's session on creating your own augmented re reality simulations using the Merge Cube. This is part two of a series. Um, we had part one last month and today we're going to be looking at how we can create our own things using the Merge Cube. So let's get started. I'd like to uh, let you know that I'm coming to you today from Northern Territory, in particular Darwin, and this is the land of the Larrakia people. And I'd like to acknowledge those traditional custodians of the land on which we're all working and living and recognise their continuing connection to the land, the water and community. And I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Today we're using Zoom as our tool for communicating and I'd just like to ask people that if you could keep your microphone off during the presentation, there will be a chance to turn it on for some discussion later and if you could keep your videos off as we are recording this session. There is a chat facility for you to put any questions or comments in and both Celia and Tony are monitoring that. And um, I'd like to thank both Celia uh, Koffer, who is the Victorian Project Officer, and Tony Faluzzi, who is the ACT Project Officer, for assisting me today and making sure all the things in the background are happening. So let's begin. Our session outline today is as follows. I'm going to start off with a very quick review over what the Merge Cube is and what augmented reality is. We're then going to go into a tool called CoSpaces and we're going to look at how we can build our own augmented reality. We're going to spend a little bit of time looking at how teachers and students are actually using the Merge Cube uh, for augmented reality experiences. I want to give uh, a little bit of an overview of design thinking process and how that fits in with building augmented reality. But of course, we'll look at what the connections are with the Australian curriculum. And then uh, if we have time, we're just going to pop into Tinkercad and look at how we can create our own 3D objects to bring into post spaces and onto a merge cube. And then I'd really like it if people could have some activity to time of their own today. Uh, to design their own augmented reality experiences. And then I'll give you a brief overview that there are some merge kits available for you to borrow from our library. So before we um, get into that side of things, I'd love to know where you're coming from today. So on this map of Australia, it would be great if you could uh, put on the map where you're from. Now we have a tool, it's the annotate tool. And if you click on annotate and then uh, go over to the stamp and you'd be able to stamp either an arrow or a star or a heart, maybe a tick or a cross, just to let us know where you're coming from today. And when you've done that, if you could go back to the mouse and click on the mouse so that we don't have stamps um, throughout the session, that would be great. So as I said, I'm coming to you today from Northern Territory, uh, up on the top of Australia from Darwin. I can see here that we have um, someone from Queensland, a couple of people from ACT and maybe someone from inland New South Wales, from Victoria, and it looks like three people from the Adelaide region. So welcome everyone, thank you. So, uh, Celia or Tony, if you'd be able to clear those now. Thank you. So my name is Sue Carter and I'm the project officer for uh, the Northern Territory uh, to share all things digital technologies. I'm part of the computer science and education research team from University of Adelaide. And what we have done is created some massive open online courses for teachers to learn more about the digital technologies curriculum. Alongside that, we have a lending library of equipment so that you can start testing some of these things in the classroom with your students and use some of the tools that are available. We have some professional learning resources. 
and uh, you can always follow us on Twitter and uh, please subscribe to our newsletter as well so you can hear about the wonderful things that are happening across our country in terms of digital technologies. Uh, to find out more, go to the caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au website. So a quick review of the Merge Cube. If you missed session one, then I'd encourage you to go to the Caesar YouTube channel and go to the link there for the augmented reality session using the Merge Cube, that's part one. Merge Cube is a spongy, dense, black foam cube. It's about seven by seven by seven in size and it has silver markings around it. And those silver markings are patterns and they provide a tri trigger that launches an augmented reality experience. And we can do this through an app, which is um, from the Merge Cube, uh, and it comes through via the camera on a device that's pointed at the cube. Now these retail for around $20 to $30, depending on where you um, buy them from. However, Merge have created a net where you can print off a paper cube or uh, put it onto cardboard and then create your own cube. And these are great to do with students so that they can build their own and take them home and share their experiences with their families. In order to see some augmented reality, you do need to use an app. And in our last session, we looked at the Explorer app. We looked at the Object Viewer app, the Things and Dig. And each one of these offers a different experience for the students. You can see on the screen there, one of the experiences is a simulation of our galaxy where you can look at different planets and find out more information. These apps are available both on the Apple App Store, uh, Google Play and on Windows 10 as well. And just a brief uh, review of augmented reality. If you haven't um, had an experience with augmented reality, Basically, it's how we're using technology to superimpose some information into our real world environment. And we're using the camera on a digital device. So what it does is it provides this digital layer of content into our physical environment. And uh, an example that most people know of is the Pokemon Go. But it does uh, require a trigger such as a QR code or an area for scanning or the glyphs that are on the outside of the merge cube in order for that digital content to be seen. And in education, what we're finding is that this enables students to interact with these three dimensional simulations that are bringing concepts, quite often difficult concepts for them to understand, it's bringing them to life. So building our own simulations and our own experiences is that next step on from using to creating. So you can see on the left hand side, there's a student who's going through the simulation and uh, looking at the earth and the different crusts, the parts of the earth going down to the core. But if you look at this one uh, that should be playing for you, um, it's the merge cube where you can actually start to build on the outside of the merge cube and you can have different things moving. So this first one here is quite an elaborate example where you can have music, you can have animation, you can have things uh, on the outside of the merge cube and in the background. Or you can actually build inside the merge cube or you can start to have uh, some information presented on the outside of the Merge Cube as well. Now this is all done through uh, a, a system called CoSpaces EDU, which is enabling students and teachers to be in that building space. So to be able to create, we go to cospaces.io-edu and we go into the My Spaces section and we create a space. And when that happens, you can have an option that says, oh, do I want just a plain space or a merge cube space? And you would choose this one that allows you to build a hologram on a merge cube. 
Now, what I found interesting recently was I had some options and I wasn't quite sure which one to go for. So you can have a 3D environment, you can have a 360 image environment, but the one we're going to focus on today is the merge cube environment. So if you're presented with a screen, anything like this, you're going to choose the bottom one, which enables you to have the merge cube to work from. And when you do that, what will happen is a merge cube will appear on your, on your scene and then you're able to start working with it. And in a moment, I'm going to take you into CoSpaces and show you how this works. Now, when you're looking at a merge cube, because it has six sides, quite often you don't know which side is which. And so if you right click on the merge cube, you'll see an option there to look at the labels. And if you select that, the labels will be there and then you'll be able to orientate yourself around which part of the merge cube you're using. Or if you want to view inside, you would select the view inside option. And again, you would have labels on the inside. So to build a scene with the merge cube, as I was explaining, this is possible to do it on the cube. So you have something on the outside or you can build inside the cube, a bit like in an aquarium, or you can have things that are floating around the cube on the outside. And we're gonna have a bit of a play at each one of those because there are some little things that you need to know in order to make those things happen. Now, the Merge Cube has a surface, as I said, it has those silver markings, but you can change that within CoSpaces. And that's by looking at the materials option, which enables you to then make the uh, environment that you're creating look more realistic. So here's an example of a truck that's actually traveling around the merge cube and they're using uh, different surfaces. Or what you can do is actually see into part of the merge cube by using what's called the opacity uh, section in there as well. So what you can do is have it looking solid or by changing the slider, it can become more opaque. And then you have the opportunity to add characters and animals. And what's interesting is that there are some options in there that can become quite confusing and it takes a little bit of time to get used to uh, what is what. So if I bring an object into CoSpaces, and I'll demonstrate this in a moment, I have this button here that allows me to lift it up and lift it down. Or I have a second button here that allows me to make it larger or make it smaller. Or a button here that allows me to rotate it. And then another one here that allows me to rotate it in different ways. So if you think of a plane where it's got some yaw and some pitch and some roll, I can do that with each character as well. But what is really important is that to have it on a merge cube, we need to look at the attach option. So at this point in time, by showing you a few things there, I'm now going to take you into CoSpaces. And this is the example of the merge cube in the space. Now, as I said, if I right click on my merge cube and I show the side labels, now I'm able to see what is at the top, what is at the front, what is on the left, where the back is, that sort of thing. So that's really important to find your orientation around your merge cube. You'll also notice that it's locked at the moment in that place. If I'm to unlock it, then I'm able to move it around. As I said, I have a material option here and I can change the color, the texture, uh, there's the colors, these are the textures on the outside, or I can keep it looking just like the merge cube. Now, as I said, you can attach different characters and down here on the bottom left-hand side is the library. And in the library, you have a number of characters, which are people, and you can scroll through and you can bring different characters in. We have animals sitting here and I'm going to choose a dog for our purposes today. So I've dragged my dog out. Now you see when I let go that these options appear here. And as I said, this option drag to scale, if I hold this down, I can make my dog larger or smaller. This one here allows me to lift my dog up 
and down in height. If I want to drag it around, I'm moving it around the surface. So you'll notice it's not actually going onto my merge cube. In fact, it's going through, but I would like it on the top. So what I need to do is right click, I'll click off, right click, click on attach. And when I do that, you'll notice that there are these blue dots on the merge cube. And in order for my dog to go onto the merge cube, I need to choose one of these dots. So if I click on this one here, you'll see now he's come to the top. And if I spin it around, I'll see the different sides of my dog there. I can make my dog smaller if I so wish. I'm also able to, as I said, move it around on a scale from side to side, from front to back, and from top to bottom. This one, which is giving me my rolling forward or sideways or around in this direction. So these are some of the features that are there. And once both yourself and your students become familiar with those, there are so many options of things you can do. Uh, I'd like to take you though into some of the uh, more advanced features here. And I'm not sure if you noticed that when I, oh, I'll just click off that. Now notice that these uh, colored circles have still appeared and that's because I haven't deselected my rotation mode. So it's a good idea to deselect it and then click outside. Now when I right click on my dog, I've got this speech option here and I can actually get my dog to be thinking or to be talking. So my dog's gonna be thinking about uh, barking, but I want him to actually say, oh, sorry, I did that the wrong way. He's saying woof. I'll just try that again. But I want him to be thinking about the fact that he might bark. So now if I click off that, can you see that he's thinking bark, but he's actually going to say woof. So you can have either both one on uh, or both of those happening. But what's even more exciting is I actually want him to move around. So if I click on the animation option, at the moment he's neutral, but I can get him to eat, I can get him to lie down, uh, I can get him to play, but I'd like to see him chase his tail. Now you'll notice that as soon as I click off the animation, it hasn't happened, nothing is happening there. And in order to see him, moving around. Over here on the top right hand corner is a button that says play. If I click on that one, now you can see the dog actually moving around. To stop this happening, if I go back, then I'm back into my creation mode again. So there are just some very small but simple options uh, for speech, for animation. I can also change what he looks like at the moment. He's this colour. If I wanted my dog to be red uh, or pink or brown, uh, I can do that uh, options as well. So this is an example of putting something on the outside of the merge cube. But as I was saying to you earlier, you can put things um, moving around the merge cube and I could go to transport and I could choose uh, the rocket or the, I might use the plane this time. Now that plane has come out really, really large. So I need to scale it down. Move it across, scale it down again. But notice it's sitting on the um, surface. So I do wanna lift that up. and I might make it a bit smaller. Now I'd like it obviously to move around. So I would choose an animation 
might put the wheels uh, door open or I might try the wheels out. So there's a few different options there of things I could do with my plane. But more importantly, uh, I think what is, is very exciting about this, I'll just move my plane a bit closer, is if I view inside. So to start to create inside your merge queue, you need to go to view inside. And hey presto, here's one I created earlier. You can see that I have um, popped a deer in there. I put in a unicorn. There's a tiger in the background. I have a lady and I've popped in a tree as well. So you can start to create a scene inside your merge cube. And I still have my dog sitting on top. So if I was to go to play now, you can see the dog's going woof and I'll just make it a bit larger. The lady's dancing around, the unicorn and the deer are eating and the tiger's having a little bit of a sleep. And the plane is on the outside, but he's not flying past at this point in time. So there you go. So there's just a few little options of things that you can do creating both on, around and inside a merge queue. I'm going to pop back to uh, the presentation for a moment. And so these are the things just going over what we've looked at. We've got a library where we can bring in some different characters and animals and objects. We have these different um, options here for every character to move them around, to make them larger and smaller and to angle them in different ways. And of course, it's really important to use that attach option uh, to attach it to the, the merge cube. Now we looked at some speech and some uh, thinking as well as some animation. And very shortly, we're going to have a look at those and give this a try ourselves. So just for a moment, yes. um, there's a question in the chat from Meredith asking how many spaces you can create with a free account. I have only been able to create one merge cube space, but my situation is a little bit more complex in that I'm using a borrowed account at the moment. So I've only been able to create one merge cube space. I'm not sure if I can do more than one at this point in time. Great question. I can investigate that a little so bit more. Michelle's mentioned that she's tried to create a third and it says it's limited to two. So two might be the maximum for the three. So two on a free account or two on a paid account? Uh, I would imagine Michelle, the question was asked about free. Now it's free, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would hope that if I'm paying for it, I would be able to do more. Yeah, no, the question was about a free account. So the free accounts are two by the sound of it. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, and just one other thing that I didn't mention while I was over there was the coding options. You can actually program inside Coast Spaces. Now what they've done is they've created their own uh, coding language. They call it CoBlocks. Uh, I wonder if that looks similar to you to anything that people may be familiar with, such as Scratch, where you've got your different types of programming options and they're all different colors. And we're using our snap blocks. Uh, but they also have a scripting option and they're using TypeScript, which personally I have not used before, but for uh, more advanced programming options, that is also there. However, there's a real trick to this. If you want to be able to program or code your characters, like the airplane that was there, I actually have to click on it and I have to choose code and I have to say using code blocks. And this is a very important step when you get to that programming side of things. So I'm just going to show you that now. Or maybe not because it's not all, there we go. 
if I go around to my aeroplane here, see here it says the coding options. If I click on code, I have these options here to use it in CoBlocks and that's where I need to turn it on. If I choose this one, show name, what it's going to do is just show the name of the item uh, here in the scene, which I don't want to do. So now my plane is available. So if I go up here to code, and if I would like to do an action, you see here that my plane is now an option. Okay, only the plane is an option because it's the only thing that's been added. If I wanted to add my dog, I would right click on my dog. I would choose code. I use him in CoBlocks. And then now he will appear and I can choose between the dog and the plane. So it's a really important step for teachers and students to understand that we're adding each character to the CoBlocks space. So now, um, the next, once you've created something in CoSpaces, you want to be able to project it onto a merge cube. So if you have a merge cube in your hand, or you want your students to be holding it, you need to be using a device. So I'd be using a, a laptop, sorry, I'd be using an iPad or, or a phone and I would need to download the CoSpaces app from Google Play, the App Store, the Oculus Store, or Microsoft, depending on whether I'm doing it in a virtual reality sense as well. Uh, and I would need to open the uh, item on the mobile device in the CoSpaces app. So the creation you've just seen, I've been doing on a laptop but now I want to project it onto my merge cube and I need to go onto a device to do that. So you can see here that the aquarium um, would then be opened on my device. I would click the play button. I would be holding the merge cube in my hand, in one hand or on a desk. And then I would be able to see the aquarium that I've created. The item, the, the submarine would be moving around the ship moves around and the um, whale is moving around also. Unfortunately, I don't have the technology to be able to demonstrate that to you today. But it would be good for you to practice it. So I've given you a very brief overview of what co-spaces look like and, and the creation side. But what does this mean for your classroom? So there are lots of projects that are out there that you can have a look at. So for instance, uh, one example is you might be doing some things with your students and they're talking about themselves and you want to know more about themselves. So you can actually build a scene on each side of the cube where they're telling you about their favourite food or about favourite things that they like to do or places they like to go on holidays, those sorts of things. Uh, there's uh, a fairy tale cube story. So you can actually grab a story and put it into a fairy, uh, a fairy tale and put it into the cube. So you can do different scenes on different sides of the cube. And a student might choose a favourite part of their story or an ending to a story. And you've got the speech boxes there and audio recordings as well to make it come alive. The uh, community at uh, CoSpaces Merge also have got a number of projects available. One example was about something, uh, what they like about where they live, which was in Hawaii. So you could think about local areas of community or places on holiday. Uh, and so have an introduction side, um, what kind of foods that they eat while they're there, what kind of activities they like to do, what's an interesting fact and scanning a model. So there are different opportunities there on those projects. Uh, and then you can go into the interactive side of it by putting buttons there, by hiding objects, by clicking something and making something happen. These are the, um, the more advanced features that you can do on your Merge Cube. So here are some examples. 
Uh, you can see here Hagrid's cabin where a student has given their impression of what it looks like from the Harry Potter story. Or this one here is a book review. So these are all static options where you can paste some information on each side of the queue. Or this one here is a birdhouse where you can animate the birds, but you can have the bird inside uh, on its nest. Then we can go to the text audio options and by clicking on these, you can have, uh, you can see uh, audio. So this one around the Grand Canyon uh, would go well with geography or learning about places. This example is the three billy goats graph where you have the different billy goats coming across uh, in different scenes. And this maths puzzle one, it's a very interesting one that I played with my daughter yesterday. Each side um, has a number that comes up and you need to make the number 258. So the top one explains to you what you're up to, but each one of these you're clicking on to add, uh, add up to make 258. So you've got units, you've got tens, and you've got hundreds there. Then we get into the more interactive models. Uh, so I'm going to show you this interactive cooking model now. So I'm loading it from CoSpaces. And when that loads, I need to click on play. And when I'm clicking on play, I'm then able to interact with this model. So this one says stir the soup five times. So one, two, three, four, five times. And then this spins around. Or move the pan and it says to move it three times. Well, this one here says to cut the vegetables. And so these get cut up. So these are just some basic examples to show that there's an interactive uh, option on the co-spaces. This one's an interesting one where they've put the rules for the lab and each one of these buttons and keys is interactive and something can happen there as well. Now, how does all this happen? How do you get access? Um, because not everything is for free. So, you can set up a, and register your own CoSpaces account uh, for free and you will have basic access. But in order to access the Merge Cube part of it, this is called an add-on. You have to have the Pro account and then do the add-on for the Merge Cube. Now, what I've discovered is that uh, CoSpaces EDU do offer a free trial for both using the pro version and the merge cube add-on and it enables it for one teacher and 99 students so if you enter in the trial code of co spro so it's the co spro 20 this is available for you to uh, at least give this a try and see do these work for your students if you already have a co spaces account um, the pro account, you need to buy a license. So if you have the basic account, you go into the settings, say, yes, I want to buy one and make sure that you add on the merge cube part, which I think is $1 per student. Or if you already have uh, a plan, a, a CoSpaces Pro plan, you can just go to the add-ons and get the add-on for the merge cube as well. Sue, so, I just wanted to interrupt to let you know that it's um, we've uh, got about 20 minutes to go, 25 minutes. We want to last some time for some chat. So, we might okay. So, so we'll go for four more minutes and then um, we're going to go in and have a bit of a play. Okay. Um, so, part of this, we also need to think about what is this going to look like for our students and what are we getting our students to be doing? So I want you to keep in mind the design thinking process. And on the left, I've got the five steps of the process where we want people to empathize and understand their environment, look at some real problems, then start to brainstorm and get the ideas of what they could do solving problems, then build an example and then test it out and then maybe iterate and look at how we can improve our design and test it again. 
So I'll skip over this. I had a um, video, but uh, people can have a look at this at a later stage. Um, but this is an example of St. Paul's College and how they went through their design thinking process. They looked at their local creek and how they could improve it and they're using the coast spaces environment for their ideas. Please keep in mind that all these fit in perfectly with our Australian curriculum, particularly with the technologies and the capabilities, both in the design and the digital side of it, as well as ICT capability. So with digital technologies, we're really looking at our processes and production skills across uh, these particular skills. And really, a lot of this is about the designing the, the digital solutions uh, with our students, along with our design as well, the design and technologies, where we're looking at investigating different ways of how products and services and environments um, are being built. So these fit into this. And now I'm starting to rush through uh, because the last thing that I wanted to mention is about Tinkercad. And uh, I was going to take you there, but I may not have no, time. No, you've got plenty. Of, you've got time. I was just going to keep it. All right. So go All right. Keep going. Don't, so don't in, in, in um, co-spaces, um, uh, you already have the objects there but you might want your students to begin to design their own. And the way they can do that is with a tool such as Tinkercad. And what's good about Tinkercad is it is free and it offers you a range of different 3D designs that you can build with your students. So you have a working plane and you can build things on that plane and then export them up in, with using a, an OBJ uh, you can then bring them into co-spaces. Or if you use the OBJ or STL option, you can take them into Object Viewer. So in co-spaces, we can upload them using 3D models and bring them in. Or with the Object Viewer, uh, we can use either of these options and take them into our library and start to uh, develop our own collection. And in session one, we went through Object Viewer and how it works. Uh, and this is a way of bringing other designs of our own into that space. Uh, so if I pop over to Tinkercad now, this is what happens when you go into Tinkercad and you create a space and you have a range of basic op, uh, shapes there. Uh, I grab the text one, I pop the text one in here and then I changed my text. And what I did was I made it have a uh, merge cube. And then I wanted to make it purple. So I changed the color and, uh, and here it is. And then I could uh, make that larger or smaller, move it around my place. But then I could export it as an OBJ in this way. And that just goes straight to the downloads of my computer. So then when I'm in the merge cube, and I'll just close the code section. So when I'm in the merge cube, I go to upload and I uploaded it from my, down, uh, my downloads and here it is. And I drag it in and here's my merge cube. Now what's interesting is I need to move it around. I need to make it smaller. Uh, I can lift it up, I can spin it around, no, nope, I need to do that, to then spin it around. And what I really liked is I could make it stand up in this way, and then if I wanted to, I could then attach it to my, well, my merge cube or my dog in this particular way. Now it's getting really messy and I could make it stand up in that fashion. So that's by bringing in my own objects into uh, my space. So that's a very quick overview of that. So now what would be really good is if people would like to have a bit of a play. We've got about 10 minutes now uh, where I'd like to be able to uh, people to have a bit of an experience uh, by going into co-spaces, 
setting up and we did ask people at the beginning or um, prior to the session to if they could set up their basic account. These are the things that you get there. And so you won't have a merge cube in there, but you'll still be able to create in the space. Then when you get in there, you go to create space. And then you can either select an environment or go straight into the library and characters. Okay, so, so yep. I've got a question from Michelle. Actually, Michelle, yep. I can ask it. Or Michelle, if you'd like to turn on your mic and ask it, if, um, you can have a conversation with Sue. Sorry about the number. Yeah, so I've saved my OBJ in, um, um, what was that, um, Tab, and then it's downloaded into my computer. Um, but when I go back to CoSpace, what do I actually click? Good question. I'll show you that again. So when you hit, you click on Uploads, and you've got all these different options here, and the one that you want for your OBJ is 3D models. You click upload, you go to your downloads. This was mine here. Actually, that might be 12th of the 10th, 13th of the 10th. I might have done that one today. I double click on it. What happens is it then says I'm customizing it, I'm uploading it. Yep, I've got it. Great. And now you can see it's appeared here. Now, it doesn't come straight into your space. You actually need to grab it and take it in there. And there's the merge cube, which was the same one. And then if I don't want it, I can just delete it and it's gone. So the trick is to go to 3D models, to click upload, to go to where it's downloaded on your computer and then it will appear as a list along here. Does that make sense? Yep, Michelle said, got it, thanks. Great. Uploads and downloads, it's all a little bit confusing, isn't it? Yeah, and, and it takes a, yeah, you have to play around with it for a little bit to get used to it. But what's really good is Codespaces have so many tutorials and PD, and booklets and resources that you can pick these things up really, really quickly. Um, any other questions? I'll just go back to this part, which is what I suggested people do. Are there any other questions? Uh, there's nothing in the chat at the moment, but at this point, if anyone wanted to ask one, we're, you're welcome to turn your mic on. Just remembering we are recording this, so we're not having vi um, video, but happy for you to turn your mic on and ask a question. So when I go to my home and I've got a space and I've created a new space, this is what people will probably be seeing. They won't see the merge cube if they don't have the add-on. However, that doesn't mean that you can't still grab a, a character and have them um, come into the space and make them a little bit larger. Oh dear. I'll just plug my computer in because I thought I was on power and I wasn't. Um, and so here's my character or I can bring some animals in and I can change the environment that they're in. So if I click on edit, uh, so I might be in this space, it's a very green space. Actually, I liked under the sea, but what about that one? Mm. Okay. I made it too small. So I've got a, a boy here and I've got a fox here. And if I right click on the boy and I do an animation, you might be doing some reactions, you might be cheering, you might be clapping, he's happy about something. I've got a, a fox here. 
and uh, he's going to pounce. There we go. Now, nothing's happening, of course, because I want to go into play. Now, here's an interesting thing. If I click play now, there you go. Oh, it's a girl, sorry. There we go. I should have her facing him, I think. There we go. So I'm going to turn her around. And I'm going to move the fox here. Let's see how that looks. Mm. Notice I can't really see the fox unless I move around in the environment. Now, the reason for that, it's really important to notice, is this blue thing here. This is your camera. And this is what you're able to project. There we go. Let's move it back a bit. I'll turn that off. Now, if I press play, now the camera, so it's the view from the camera, what you can see. So there's my Arctic fox and, and the girl clapping uh, as he's moving around and ready to pounce again. So once you become familiar with the different um, tools within Coast Spaces, uh, yeah, the world is your imagination. There's so much creativity that you can do in this space. Um, so Jane has mentioned that she was surprised that, oh, I'll read it. I was surprised that I didn't animate my animal, but when I pressed play, um, it was stretching and shaking its mane. Is there a so default? Um, yep. yep, so it's possible that I haven't played with all of these, but if I bring an animal in, it might already have a default animation. Let me just put the cat over here. So which, um, which one did she use? Um, Jane used, uh, oh, it doesn't say, but I'm imagining it was, it was a lion. Okay, thank you. Yep. And um, Michelle used a unicorn and they had default movements they do so if you can see my cat now the cat is licking its paws okay so that's the default that the animal goes in with and then if i right click look at the animation uh oh, it says it's neutral that's the it's neutral animated thing so if i go to play and i'll see so now the cat's lying down and playing That's cute. All right, I won't get lost in that. Um, so how are people going with their, their, their um, experimenting in the space? Meredith says the dog, um, well, the dog wags its tails and moves its head. Yeah, so there's obviously some default movements and things. That, yeah. I think um, we've got 10 minutes to go, so perhaps it might be time for you to Okay. the last slides. All right. Unless people have any other questions, which they can put, put in and I'll keep an eye on. So um, let's move on. Resources. I mentioned to you that there are so many resources there for you to follow up on. Um, these ones that come from CoSpaces are their tutorials. These are two page uh, e explanation of those different things that I've gone through today. Um, this one explains how you can put buttons and then you can code the buttons or the interactions in your spaces as well. So um, the easy way to get them is just to go to their website and click on that link and they, you, they're downloadable. There are also lesson plans already done up as starting points. So if you're not sure where you want to take this with your students, have a look at some ideas that are already available and some of them are already subject specific as well. Other resources on the website, on the Coast Spaces website, uh, they have co-blocks. So how does that actually work? You've got your reference guide and then there's a poster that you can put up. So you can work out which uh, block works for which type of thing you want to do. They also have these very simple online courses. They only go for a couple of hours where you can look at different elements of using Coast Spaces 
and then they've got the VR part of it as well. There's also a, an official guide that you can download and find out more about how to use the CoSpaces Pro section. Uh, and what's very interesting is that because of COVID-19, they've actually set up some projects that students can be involved in. So it's really a, a good idea to have a look at those. Now this lady, Stephanie, has set up a whole lot of design challenges. Um, so you might like to have a look at some of those and think about starting in this space as well. There are also a number of student project ideas um, at the AR VR EDU hub. So it's good to have a look at some of the projects that students have started there across different grade levels, uh, as well as some project outlines that are available. So lots and lots of starting points for people. Uh, and I'd just like to remind you all that there is a lending library and we now have merge cube kits in our lending library. You'll get eight merge cubes and four iPads and some lesson plans to get started uh, with merge cubes. So I know that the Northern Territory kit is available uh, for me to deliver to a school that puts their hand up first to say, yes, please, I want to give this a go. Uh, and there are some others across um, the other states and territories as well to go out. Uh, in order to access those, you need to go to the caesarmoop.adelaide.edu uh, website and register in the lending library space. And I wanted to remind people that we do have our open courses all around digital technologies. We've recently released the cybersecurity and awareness courses. There's one for primary and one for secondary. And don't forget the teaching AI in the classroom which tells you all things um, augmented reality, virtual reality, as well as the artificial intelligence space. These are free, self-paced, and uh, there are project officers that can assist you with those. Um, so it would be really good if you can provide us some feedback and Tony or Celia will pop that link into the chat for you today. And we would ask people if they could uh, please give us some feedback. And remember to keep in touch through Facebook, through Twitter, and through our YouTube channel as well. And please make sure you visit seasonmoops.adelaide.edu.au. Now we do have some more webinars coming up uh, in two weeks time. You'll be able to tune in to Professor Stephen Heppel uh, with our project officer, Peter Lalong from Tasmania. And they're going to be looking at leadership in schools and what this means for digital technologies. And then the following week, uh, we'll also have an unplugged classroom uh, resources for teaching digital technologies without the devices. And just to finish off today, there's one really uh, lovely uh, space I'd like to share with you. This is on the CoSpaces um, homepage before you log in and I clicked on gallery and when you open up gallery there's uh, a lot of options there that you can look at uh, but one of my favourites is this one. It's called Utopia and it's been developed by the CoSpaces team and it just shows you what's possible. So here on the top, you can see that they've built uh, a lovely forest environment. So you've got birds flying on the outside. You've got tigers sitting here with their animations moving around. A bear on this side. There's an elephant somewhere as well. Oh, there's the elephant. You've got someone inside there doing some dancing or Tai Chi or some girls on a boat. And I think this is the bottom where the ship is and the elephant and crabs are. Um, so this is a, a fascinating example that you could uh, show students about just what is possible in this space. So um, 
thank you everyone for participating in uh, today's augmented reality session. Uh, I hope that it opened up some doors and ideas for you. And um, please make sure that you tune in again for one of our future webinars. Uh, Celia and Tony, if you'd like to turn the recording off and if there are any questions, uh, if anyone would like to share with us their experiences today.